place in a lot of stores. So it's little wonder that smart shoppers everywhere take time out to pause and refresh. And where else but in the fountain where they serve ice-cold Coca-Cola? The E-Militia Podcast, Episode 59, The Philosopher Voluntarism in the New Era. Enjoy, fuckers. All right. Hello, and welcome to the E-Militia Podcast. Um, I haven't done an intro in a minute. I've been doing my show. I was actually doing my <laughs> own intro. Oh, Christ. Uh, figured I'd let this go. <laughs> yeah. Really? What, already? Off the bat? What a failure. Uh, what a failure. All right. Hello and welcome to the Email Militia Podcast. Today I'm joined by my co-hosts, Bootlickers Beware, a.k.a. Gramps, and Guns and Guillotines, a.k.a. Guns. And special guest today, we have the philosopher, a long-time voluntarist in the community, uh, putting out propaganda just like the rest of my good friends here. Welcome to the show. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> so how's it going? How have you been during this uh, dystopian era that we've entered? Oh, um... Well, I mean, it's been going that way for a while. (laughs) Absolutely. You had like the TSA at the airports, and there was already so many things we're conditioned to, like no knock raids, you know, being like, um, you know, uh, just some cop threatening you because he has a gun right there. And he's like, you know how fast you were going, you know, and like, He's like, you want a ticket? And you're like, no, not not really. Like, I don't want to go to court and spend my time there. Hey. So, you know, road pirates. Um, so anyway, we've been conditioned to a lot and uh, lots of wars. But um, this, pa- this past year was crazy. You know, I mean, it was, it was pretty uh, rough, I would say. <laughs> For me, like, I had to, um, uh, like, figure out ways to... Um, stay connected with family. I had a lot of trips um, and with two friends as well to that I had to cancel. Um, and yeah. events that we we're going to do. We we're going to do a Vegas red flag reality event. So it was really sad to have to cancel that. Oh, and we we're going to do it uh, with FPC. And the gang from FPC, Firearms Policy Coalition, was going to be there. And in Vegas, they know of a range where you can like go in a helicopter and shoot machine oh, guns. The, uh, so the, the, machine, the machine gun helicopter yeah. tour I, that, that keeps on cropping yeah. up in my IG, and I'm like, uh, oh, I'm gonna really? end up, I'm gonna end up sinking, gonna end up sinking money into that someday. I <laughs> yeah, can't help myself. I think Vegas has opened up again now, but um, uh, last year, you know, just for most of the year, I mean, after March like a lot of other states, uh, you know, we had to cancel that. So it was so, you know, I I was so excited for that, but um, it was sad to have to like re-strategize. And it really felt like a war. I mean, it's been a war, right? But it seemed like another move. You know what I mean? Like another um, another another advance. (laughs) A not so silent weapon. Right, like oh, yeah. in your face, like, hey, what are you going to do about it? Kind of like, well, yeah. you know, it's, are you going to stand up like, or are you going to, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not like 9-11 or something where it was it only affected, say, directly, you know, New Yorkers or for people being, I mean, we all got more heavily screened afterwards, but. Yeah, you know, exactly. Um, but th- this time, like, you, you could be out in the most rural part of America or rural part of the world even. And uh, <laughs> you go to your local shop, and there might be a sign on the door telling you to put on a mask. It's, there's no one this hasn't impacted in some way. I, I mean, apart from those uh, those lucky bastards on that um, that island off India who've been left alone by everyone, they're, they're still doing that end prim thing. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, or some states in the U.S. Right? Some. I, well, I, I guess we uh, we have uh, was it Ms. It's Texas and one of the M states that no one remembers. Oh. 
I mean, Florida's wilding out too, dude. Yeah, so no, they've, they've been wilding out the whole time. Yeah, don't, don't forget the Florida man. Don't forget <laughs> no, no. Florida man didn't didn't give a fuck about gyms. They they shut down for like, or I mean, the 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 governor shut things down for like two months. Um, yeah, like, that, that was really right, short nice. compared to most others, but yeah, I think it was like I heard South Dakota never, at least at the state level, did anything. Um, I don't know of any local, but yeah, so there were some states. It's been a, yeah, yeah, been a mixed bag of a year. All sorts of social experiments going on, and God knows uh, <laughs> what the full extent of the damage will be. But um, yeah, glad and to conditioning. Know. You know, oh, yeah, I mean, you're seriously. talking about. Propaganda. Live through the most extensive psychological operation that's ever been conducted on humans. It happened on the Seriously. Wait a, yeah. <laughs> Veterans of the COVID era. Yeah. I mean, it's very fascinating uh, in a way that, but actually not really. But of course, there are people <laughs> who are really fascinated by the human mind and psychology. I'm one of those people. But, um, the purpose that some people employ that knowledge for can be so different, you know, some very nefarious. And I think that the people who are in control of like the banks, the federal reserve, um, funding the politicians, like whatever, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, you know, controlling those politicians. Um, I think they use it for nefarious reasons, but they actually really understand human psychology, which is interesting. I mean, it's like interesting to share that interest or whatever uh, with them or knowledge, but then realize that they're using it in order to get people to uh, become like a mob, essentially, like a like a <laughs> pitchfork mob that you know doesn't listen to reason and evidence is coming to get you and. Oh yeah, public you know, shaming has been the, the best yeah. tool of this era. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like and you don't have yeah. to spend a dime on cops because you know if if you make <laughs> if you propagandize something enough, uh, you'll get regular people to enforce it with shame and you know all the the fucking craziness that they've uh, they've been showing. <laughs> yeah, the Karens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, crazy. welcome. <laughs> yeah, oh. but it's pretty crazy. Uh, we just slowly. Oh, what's up, oh. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy how <laughs> that's kind of like. Oh, sorry. Talk it's just crazy how some of this is like empowered people who like. I guess I mean we're all we're all humans, but I guess like um, in yeah. our standard hierarchy or standard life, <laughs> I guess it seems like this has like empowered certain people that like would never really have had um i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say i guess like i guess what i'm getting at a specific is, person like a politician that you think wouldn't have had uh fame well, right, yes, otherwise? That, that but also right down to like to individuals on the street you know like i mean i'm not like i'm not a super huge wildly intimidating person right but i've had um you know, like very like uh, beta type people confront me in a very confrontational mm -hmm. manner that would like that I know like in a in a private setting where they weren't relying on this mob mentality or ex anticipating this mob mentality would never like feel um, empowered, I guess, or would never confront me. I guess does that makes sense. What I'm trying to say, like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. C completely yeah. non-confrontational people are now like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, now, they like, feel, of course, they feel emboldened because uh, yeah, they have the that's the great word, emboldened. That's the correct word. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like you would, you would absolutely never in your wildest dreams, <laughs> in a normal circumstance. Oh, they created lots of Karens. I mean, uh, they. I mean, maybe the Karens were already there. Karens. Yeah, but they were just too coward. <laughs> or whatever they wanted to do, like wasn't enforced by the state anyway, you know. But in this case, now they like you, they may be in a state where that is. I've had to resist that on the local level, like near me, um, and uh, just <laughs> basically just like act normal as I walk in without a mask and just smile at people, be nice, just literally act like things were before. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know, I'm just like, hey, how's it going? Like, what's it? <laughs> We're already like, starting to see uh, memes of black and white photos of people out eating. It's like, yeah, remember? <laughs> it's like 2019. Yeah. It's so a photo 2019. from 2019. <laughs> like, no, yeah. everyone's close. Holding, yeah. <laughs> how, how things used That's to be in the before four times. Wow, you just made some meme content. There's some meme makers. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get some memes. Okay. So, I saw a comment <laughs> the other day that said, when I was in, I, when the when the lockdown started, I was in high school and I bought my first legal beer today. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. That's probably true, though. I'm sure there's somebody out there with a weird birthday. That, well, like, I mean, if, if you got held back, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Oh, They're clearly bad at math. Oh, I am <laughs> too. Anyway, that's that's enough doom and gloom off the bat. Um, so we like, we like on the show we like to. Do, uh, we like to ask how you ended up here amongst uh, a bunch of rabid anarchists. What <laughs> what brought you? Oh, what brought you to this place? <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, um, <laughs> the longer so, the story, the better. We we love a good oh, story. Oh, how long you got? Like, <laughs> one bad of beer? No. Okay, get some wigs. Okay, so, uh, so one day I was born. <laughs> and before that my parents got together and they used to love each other and <laughs> like all right so common story <laughs> so um basically i'll just summarize like how i got here and i i do always mention this like as part of my origin story is like uh my childhood and my family my family of origin the school i went to the friends i had the relationships and the things I saw and these experiences I had. And there was a lot of traumas. That was a common thing. Uh, you know, I um, uh, mentioned it, which is, you know, my parents are divorced. And that was its own trauma of not being able to, for example, uh, see my father since I was like seven and having to deal and process the drama of their relationship and not wanting to be together. You know, when I'm just like a kid and just like want them to. And then um, also with my uh, family itself, I, I mostly know about my mother's side because, you know, of my father being estranged. Um, but from my mom, uh, her family, my grandma, her siblings came from Vietnam and they came to America after the Vietnam War ended and the mm. communist government, the, the Vietnamese communist government was coming to seize the wealth and money and property of rich people to, to pay back the debt for the war. Um, I think, I think they were indebted to China. I, I could double check that, whatever, but <laughs> something, uh, but they're coming to take money from my family. So they didn't want that, of course. So they fled to America. Um, and, America for me, you know, has this interesting from a perspective of a first generation, uh, you know, immigrant family um, or, or American. Uh, it is like a beacon of freedom to people who weren't born here immediately, you yeah. know, like to my own family. And I get that the socialism was here already, you know, <laughs> like yeah. well, I mean, security, I mean, the war, yeah. the Federal Reserve, all that. But uh, nonetheless, compared to what, you know, the culture of freedom too here is really interesting, uh, even though there's a lot of doublespeak when it comes to American politics. There's a lot of rhetoric of like freedom still, and you can see um, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden swearing an, you know, an oath to the Constitution, <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> right after, just like sign all these executive orders that like violate the Constitution. Like, what is going on? Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't exactly. think of something more so. anarchist than not being able to say constitution without laughing. <laughs> it's like constitution. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I mean, you're right. <laughs> um, but, you know, just even by their own standards, they don't follow and they violate their own uh, rules and, yeah. and edicts. So, um, but anyway, so my history was uh, rooted in this idea of desiring freedom and understanding what it's like to. Uh, I mean, not directly, but just through stories from my family and my mom, my grandma in particular, especially, 
people I really love hearing their stories and their suffering and their pain, like, you know, will always stay with me. And I always bring it up because that's really my roots as an anarchist or voluntarist or libertarian. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, hearing what they went through, like from uh, my mom, who, you know, I'm closest to it and know the most about, like her story uh, of being really young and at four having to flee through the woods of Cambodia to Vietnam to escape the Khmer Rouge, who murdered her sister in front of her. Uh, face and she was really young i don't know if she really remembers or if she's shocked but my grandma certainly remembered and uh, they had to flee on foot and her great great grandma so my grandma's grandma uh, or mom um just couldn't make it through the woods and she just you know stayed there and she she died and um you know and the, like that's so much trauma in the history of my own family and uh so much yeah and you know i <laughs> already mentioned the divorce and stuff so they had their own you know of course will human will and responsibility and actions they took but a lot of it was rooted in their own trauma and like reactions to it and not really knowing how to like communicate uh, peacefully and, and have a good vulnerable conversation well, it's generational trauma yeah. for sure yeah yeah and just like uh, being in fight or flight mode and just needing to survive. So that's kind of, you know, and that's so close to home. That's like my own mom, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, um, generation away. yeah, yeah exactly. Street cred. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, yeah, I guess it came with its Very own, real. uh, yeah. challenges growing up. <laughs> my, mind, mind F words, you could say, can, can <laughs> I swear or? Oh yes. Swear. This show is, please do. Oh. This, <laughs> please do. this show is. Oh. You can send it out if you like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if there are children watching, their parents are failing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, on YouTube, I'm like, not me meant for kids. Don't want to deal with that. Or, or if culture. they are listening, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe other. <laughs> yeah, Go I mean, ahead, maybe, yes. maybe they're learning something. The, <laughs> the only thing I censor on the show right. is people dox themselves. <laughs> Apart from that, there are no beeps. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Cool. Um, so yeah, so that, anyway, I, um, I kind of, basically, I mentioned that because I've kind of always had in me this skepticism of government, though I did love freedom. It was more so rooted in my family's experience and how they dealt with the world and how my family would like, uh, they do, a, they did a lot of work. They would grow gardens or go to the market with vegetables they grew and sell them or bring pho to the market uh, or have a noodle restaurant like they did in Cambodia. Um, so I just saw this voluntary interaction and how they live peacefully. Although, you know, of course, on a personal level, witnessing at home the violence. <laughs> I'm like, hey. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so. Um, Aside from that, like just people outside their home <laughs> and immediate family, uh, you know, most people get like murder is wrong, theft is wrong, and it would be okay to retaliate if someone like try to steal your things or try to kill you, you know. So most people get that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just like what they do at home as well. Uh, that is, is a big problem as well so anyway so that's like my family's experience with government and then as i was alluding to it's also my own experience with my own family and their treatment of me and like my relationships growing up uh, uh like in school or like with peers and um yeah i i kind of just like was a status like reacting for most of my childhood after the divorce i'd say and just try to like figure out what was going on <laughs> Oh, yeah. I just like, okay, I'm going to ski. Like, all right, I got to get A plus. Like, you know, just like <laughs> yeah, trying to figure bullshit. out. What's... Yeah. Uh, I liked Obama. I'm like, he's really good at speaking. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, and he's so cool, Reading you know. <laughs> yeah. And I like rap. And so I'm like, oh, he's got that street cred. Oh, God. <laughs> so <laughs> and um, I'm like, I'm an independent. You know, I'm like, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I'm an independent. Like, you know, that was me. And, you know, so there you go. Uh, so I had some leanings 
but I didn't really start to change until into an anarchist or really like conceptualize what that was until I encountered uh, Stefan Molyneux and my uh, ex, or I mean, I mean my <laughs> boyfriend at the time, my ex, currently my ex, but uh, my boyfriend at the time was the one who introduced me to him. And uh, so I listened to Stefan Molyneux's podcast first just like a bitcoin presentation and so this was early like 2012 or something like that um gosh that's a long almost 10 years yeah back, <laughs> back when stefan mullen long was time. Actually, actually a libertarian <laughs> oh nice um yeah i mean i think he kind of went back after he was like deplatformed off youtube i don't know oh really <laughs> kind of went I, back I, to his roots i i haven't listened to him in so bit. long but he he did contribute a lot to uh, to me like developing my ideas as well because he used to actually yeah. have some very good videos about thinking for yourself and like rejecting violent systems i was, I, I went from like <laughs> listening to stephen crowder to listening to him and i was like oh this makes more sense and he started going all yeah. like weird populist nationalist i was like what the fuck is happening <laughs> And uh, yeah, and, and I, uh, I would say in bits and pieces too, like it was interesting. Like, he still had yeah. old Molyneux because I he, he would still have the principles, peaceful parenting, and yeah, uh, he didn't actually still help people change to adopt philosophy. But you're right, like in the middle, sometimes it'd be like some sprinkles, sprinkles of nationalism or like, yeah, you know, folk or like, for Trump. So, or, yeah, yeah, he, he had a lot of videos that were like, uh, if you're a if you're a volunteer or something, you should be voting for Trump. I was like, oh my god, you're lost, buddy. <laughs> some, oh, yeah, I think some, I saw something like that. that. One. And then he uh, yeah, he had like a, a little streak where he went on. He went like hard on the culture war, which I'm I don't care about anymore. <laughs> I I'm like ninety percent don't care. And uh, he he had some some like strange quotes. Let's we don't have to do a a Molly meme uh, deep dive, but my word, he he had some. Some highs and some lows, but but no, I, I abso absolutely uh, some high up. highs for sure. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I probably and he influenced you, which is cool. That's yeah, cool. I probably wouldn't uh, be quite where I was without <laughs> without his videos, like kicking me down the rabbit hole that I was peering into. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. But... I mean, and and that's exact. Yeah, and that was exactly my point. Is he was my first um, influence, major influence, and um, he just introduced what uh voluntarism was which or libertarian whatever uh the philosophy of libertarianism of self-ownership of the idea that you as an individual human being own yourself your body your justly acquired property and that no one else should be able to take that away from you and the same thing applies to all other individual humans um as well and when I heard that, I was like, "Oh, okay, cool. So I'm an anarchist. <laughs> like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to violate scary. someone's consent. Yeah. Yeah. So, what yeah. was the? Was there any like? Was there a moment of, uh, of, not not terror, but like, oh my god, is that mm -hmm. what I am? When you when you were starting to acknowledge that you know, <laughs> anarchist might be the correct label, or did you did you go through like voluntarist or libertarian like? Most of us went through. Oh, that's funny. Those, those I know. I, I was anarchist right away. Uh, I was just <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, yeah, all right, I'm an anarchist. <laughs> but yeah. I had to start, you know, that process of like thinking through, like, okay, well, what about the police that I've been conditioned to think were like my friends yeah. and just helping to keep us all safe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slow on the road, you know. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> um. But yeah, oh, and then the, the last thing about uh, Stefan Molyneux was I got interested in him not because of the Bitcoin presentation. I actually, funny enough, just found that boring. I was oh, like, man. he's going on for, forever. Like, I didn't even get the value of Bitcoin at the time. Oh, and, and so, did you start oh, like, looking into that in like 2012 or something? Um, I mean, my ex was really into it, so I always like kept abreast of it just because of him, just through him. But like, uh, I just remember that presentation. I don't know why. Just maybe the way he presented it, and me being all like kind of SJW at the time. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like yeah. triggered. I was like, uh, he's boring. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, I kept listening to him just because he had these call-in shows. You guys, if you if you listen to mm -hmm. stuff on, you probably know of these. Is he just had people call in and it ranged in various topics, like from 
uh, economic questions and debates to very personal like, hey, I have this issue with my mom or my dad. I can't talk to them. Can you help me? And he more just has a nice dialogue with them, like a Socratic reasoned evidence dialogue. I, I did and like I really enjoyed those. Things. Yeah, like his, yeah. his approach was sound. And I learned a lot about like mm. reason from him. <laughs> and then we started using them in like, yeah. we, we, like talking about, um, I don't know, there's one thing about heels and lipstick and women, like if, if they wear them at work, they just, <laughs> like it, it's something to do with primates. I was like, what the fuck are you on about, dears? <laughs> I, I, got well, I didn't read. He some. sounds like the Doctor Phil of libertarians. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we probably. I mean, kind of is right. He's yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah, I've seen those memes. Like, uh, stop! Have you still have eggs? You still have time to fertilize. Oh, but yeah. you know, I, I I can't laugh too much because I I don't know. I don't see it as malicious. I mean, right? Like, I don't oh, know. I don't no, think he, he's, he's, like... he's probably trying. Or... <laughs> he's doing his best to make a positive change from his point of view. I mean, aren't we all? No, no one, yeah, he's like, no one sets have out kids. To be a bastard. Yeah. And yeah. be in a committed relationship and have peaceful parenting. Oh, yeah. Have yeah. some babies. Yeah. It's, it's a good meme. <laughs> Molly meme. Um, yeah. Oh, the meme economy. Good times. It, it's it's blowing. It is. That's like one solace. So, That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> here for the memes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, hopefully that answered your question. I tried. I mean, I was kind of long winded ah, at some no, point. No, so no, but, no. Uh, you, you should. Some of the some of the origin stories summarize. we have go on. Yeah. <laughs> the whole show. <laughs> yeah. It's like the whole show. You're like, well, I gotta go. It's like, like, yeah. I had some list of questions, maybe. I don't know. But um. So. Cool. <laughs> so you're a. Uh, my, my my take on you is like kind of a, a propagandist. I see you putting out content, trying to trying to educate others on the on the gram and all that. Um, what's your kind of core focus? I see you're you're very into the Second Amendment part of the message, um, or gun rights, should I say? If it, we're all anarchists here, we can we can drop the words, <laughs> the, <laughs> the window dressing, Sorry. gun rights instead of uh, Second Amendment rights. But um, <laughs> like is is that your core message? Would you say or I would say my core message is philosophy and um, desiring truth above falsehood and mm. having that be your core foundation, first and foremost. And then secondly, following that, knowing yourself, like, or maybe as part of that, just like knowing who you are, analyzing your history, why you do the things you do, uh, things you have that are more involuntary like whether you you know like you get hungry like you're not gonna reasonably forever you know keep stave that off right um and uh being able to um when you have that i, I think in my opinion the goal is to uh be a voluntary so I, w I wouldn't say it's it's gun rights as my core i think you know that's definitely one thing i'm very passionate about but the uh, core focus of my page is philosophy and just um you know desiring uh truth above all else and then lastly just empathy for our fellow human beings and love and this ability to just coexist together explore the world together uh without needing to enact violence and cause each other to uh suffer in terms of like seizing their property or harming their bodies um you know viol vi or violating their consent um i, I it, those are kind of all my goals of just like promoting voluntary human interactions and also self-knowledge and just like this um yeah and also just a, a desire for uh for truth and like being able to um like i just envision a world where if people would just not, I mean, and there are, there are many people, and those are the people who help push the world forward, I think, in my opinion, and build efficiencies in the market. Um, but if everyone did that, like if there's no more wars, like if there's no, you know, central agency taking 20, 30, 40, 50% of your income uh, to just like enslave you some more and, you know, fund million dollar hollywood movies to propagandize you to love them and think they're like cool like 
you know. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, anyway. All the reasons. We hate the state. What? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> All the reasons we already hate the state. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I think the most maddening thing for most like libertarians anarchists is just sitting around and being like, this could be so much more fucking efficient. <laughs> what are we doing? I know, uh, you know, and it it just seems like people like clubbing you, like or clubbing <laughs> your progress. Or I like to use the phrase, or I don't know, yeah, phrase, yeah, like cutting. They're cutting off my legs. Like it just kind of feels like that. It's like ah, oh, I take a step forward, and then it's like. Cut. I'm just gonna cut off like your progress. Now you gotta, you know, recover from how I cut your legs off. Maybe get a prosthetic or some shit, and then, like, try again. And um, you know, yeah. And, and that's just what I'll say. I mean, it is just fellow humans, right? And um, they enact violence. They violate the nap, and therefore they don't deserve uh, peace. <laughs> so. Um, you deserve yeah. constant torment. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, uh, just we should be free to defend ourselves and um, defend ourselves how we need to uh, yeah. when we're being uh, imminently threatened with death or imprisonment. So, um, yeah. So hopefully that answered your question. Oh, yeah. It did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, uh, I, I think a lot more people are picking up on that uh, message of individualism and, um, you know, looking after themselves. And I mean, we, we have so many people obviously shutting down their empathetic part of them. But at the same time, I think a lot of a lot of people who weren't paying attention to these kind of messages are also picking up on the uh, the fact that the state won't look after you and hasn't been looking after us. And so we've got a lot more people kind of looking for for alternative reason right now and so um I know, definitely you, i think so i see that trend too have you noticed uh has anyone been coming to your page kind of looking for fresh answers you had much of that i i know we all we've all been zucked recently as part of the problem so right as right as people are like okay this is clearly bullshit we're back to being like small fry um <laughs> were you uh zucked on the gram oh, yeah. <laughs> the gram yeah yeah um, you were oh wow we, did you get banned as part of the uh the election wave because a bunch of us got banned like a few days yeah. before the election oh yeah it was uh awesome because <laughs> they just was it the same for you where they just disable it without reason yeah yeah you, it, it was just yeah. gone it's like oh it's because i made right. a few biden and kamala jokes <laughs> like, damn that's so oh, tragic i think uh, yeah, oh, you know <laughs> you know what serious, i was wondering so what, that's funny i was wondering what the heck got me because you know they don't listen to reason but if you're saying if you think it's biden that would make sense because it was like election weekend um i did put mm -hmm. like uh yeah a couple of pictures like of standing in front of my tv mm -hmm. uh when trump and biden were debating and just holding up a middle figure in front of them both <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 um, I think, well, maybe yeah, but you uh, were you were also insulting Trump, so you're clean. I know, but hmm. yeah, yeah, it should have been a wash. Oh. Yeah, you got to do them both at the same time. You can't <laughs> you favor if you favor one side, you're liable to just be nuked for no reason. Yeah, you you, you go from political <laughs> yeah. pundit to right wing extremist just like that. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, maybe they looked at posts where I just like shared or made one about Biden. Or Kamala, so yeah, I, th I think but, um, I think they were they were pretty hot yeah. on the uh, the calling them warmongers <clears throat> and like police state tyrants. They all of my stuff like that was starting to get flagged a few days before the election. I was like, oh, here we go. And then mm -hmm. what do you know? Wiped. <laughs> I got a few. Wow. I had a few posts deleted the other day, and it they gave me the your account may be deleted message. But if you can learn to follow our rules, <laughs> yeah. maybe not. <laughs> if you become really, if you become they a were open so. That's they, crazy. Yeah. Man. You have so many followers. That'd be ridiculous. They were old posts. I don't oh. like. I don't understand what like algorithm did that. But it's mm -hmm. because I made. I left a comment on a meme page, and that comment was deleted for harassment or I don't care. One of those things oh, for harassment or some shit. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, wow. But it was deleted, and I got that notification. And then immediately after that, like two or three of my posts were deleted, and it said your account may be deleted. I was like, what the fuck? 
Uh, it's so frustrating, you know, because you... I didn't even say anything bad. Mm-hmm. Are oh. you on backups? Otherwise? Nope. <laughs> if I die, I die. Yeah, I was, was going to say, Guns <laughs> never had a backup. Which, and, and he's the only one who hasn't wow. been zucked, which is annoying. That's so crazy. That it's is also, annoying. You literally... It's like work for him. He it just, literally he says guns it. and guillotines. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> not saying you should, but I'm just saying, hey, I'm the philosopher. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I said I'm peaceful parenting. Well, they, they even like sure there was something concerned there, but whatever. They took down Seaburn's post, who, uh, who took CB- CBRN boy, I think he was, before mm-hmm. he got zucked. I and- look at someone and wonder, what is that? Uh, no. <laughs> and, and I have uh, not. <laughs> Passive and uh, and gas ma- like how to use a gas mask and shit and he got zucked at the same yeah. time so Christ knows what the algorithms were to to take us all out but hey ho in the past rebuilding the brand <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's rough I mean I'm like I just passed 1900 today I was like woo but uh, when I got congrats um, <laughs> it's kind of low though uh, yeah, well uh, I mean compared to what I was used to before which was like. 10.7 thousand and that took me a while to like get up I think like at least a year and a half i think yeah. it took me at least a month fun. fuck you <laughs> <laughs> thanks wow you said it he just told me <laughs> i'm just i'm just saying i'm i'm impressed all hey, right no, not everybody's built like me you're right? looking for a job <laughs> no, i'm just kidding i'm just joking guns um <laughs> good for you. That's awesome. I followed oh, you back. <laughs> I like your memes. It's good shit. No, no, don't, <laughs> shit. don't don't follow guns. Are it, you okay? It, it his ego. No, he's... No. <laughs> I followed you too, bloody, because oh, you uh, followed me. So I was like, hey. all right, all right, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. You okay there, guns? You choking? Yeah. Do we? Do we? I'll survive. Get on the Rona. I'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> Buckles, your um, your avatar is like strippy. Is like uh, like a possum disguised as a girl. Is that? That's exactly what. It is. <laughs> wow. Okay. So it's, it's, a a, yeah. it's a spicy cat. Yeah. It's a spicy cat in a human suit. <laughs> oh, okay. You're a spicy cat. All right. Yeah. Slapping <laughs> is a human female. <laughs> 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 Where did you really find that? You. I've never <laughs> once looked at that picture. Really? What? Because it's so you... small, I just didn't quite make it out, and so I never, oh. you know, I, I never I looked little... into it further. I just assumed oh. it was like a park ranger that had been stepped on, but maybe I'm just retarded. I don't know. Wow. Well, now you see it. Now you can't unsee it. Now you, just, <laughs> that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a possible. You're... Where'd you find that picture? It looks. It, I, I think I always thought it was some kind of chicken from. <laughs> The really <laughs> tiny circle down there, like it's something about the the oh, colors yeah. and like oh, it I looks like that. it has oh I see it looks the like eye and the ear yeah, and I the see? nose looks like the crown on a chicken to me. <laughs> yeah, from yeah, this far like away. a guy chicken, right? Like yeah. not a the yeah, guy yeah. chicken, <laughs> the rooster, yeah, yeah. rooster. And that thing on his chin, the um, yeah, exactly. That makes it a guy chicken. Thought it was a chicken. Model? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Yes, it's a possum <laughs> in a human suit. <laughs> so you know those, uh, the you know those tangents I was talking about. I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just I found did. one. <laughs> this is, we uh, did. Who's the mod? Right. Who's the moderator? Right. So, uh, but what do you what do you see as the future for the Liberty community? Because we've been growing pretty rapidly yeah. the past few years, and you've been paying attention for a little while now, like the rest of us. So. What can you see as a future for the the community? You think we're we're gonna keep on growing, or you think we're gonna I don't know switch up tactics? <laughs> Anything we're we're gonna keep on moving this thing? Um, I definitely think it will keep growing. I don't know how rapidly, but I definitely think um, there are many people who are just fed up with how they're being treated, with how much they're being taxed, with the continually decreasing opportunities to generate wealth and create wealth and like all the barriers to entry that are um increasingly expanding <laughs> yeah I mean, uh, so a year yeah. where small businesses were like pff, slaughtered 
and then corporations were yeah. bailed out with our, with our tax money. So it, at, at this, I know at, at this point, and politicians. Yeah, it's it's and, like and uh, they had insider trading and yeah, there's just like, such an endless list. Apparently, the American grievances. dream is running for Congress. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think um, uh, what I see is more people getting involved politically. I see a rise in, for example, the specifically the Libertarian Party Mises Caucus. Uh, so the the uh, Mises Caucus of the LP. Um, they their goal is to focus the message of the LP back to the fundamental principles of voluntarism. Uh, most of them are anarcho-capitalists, but not all of them are. The um, I think the common thread though is that everyone believes in like free market capitalism, just like pure voluntary trade is fine whether or not there's some sort of government and how that gets funded or how you transition yeah. to voluntarism is another conversation. But everyone's aligned that the goal is 100%, you know, non-aggression principle, uh, respect of body and property rights. So that that's the goal of the Mises Caucus. And they've been growing a lot. Like, um, they're a, they're a PAC, a political action committee, so they can receive funding, they can fund candidates, they're uh, trying to work on the local level to help uh, raise awareness for legislation or things that are on the ballot that would, for example, things like decriminalizing uh, mushrooms in, I think it was Oregon or Colorado, I, I forgot which. Say, Oregon has, I think, all drugs decriminalized yeah. now, right? Yeah, and I forgot which one uh, Mises Caucus helped with, but. Uh, one of well, one of those states, um, but that's just an example of like the kind of things that they focus on. And I've seen their membership grow, and their their funding grow, like their monthly support as well. So I predict that will keep going. It has a lot of momentum. There's people like you know Ron Paul, Tom Woods, Dave Smith, who uh, the the Mises Institute themselves that uh, seem to support the Mises Caucus. So I just see that as uh, I mean, they're meeting the the demand, the market demand of of some libertarians who just want to be involved politically, but like don't want to go to Republican <laughs> chapter <laughs> near their house, you know, or like some Democrat, you know, meet up. Like yeah. they if, they if want a home. A, yeah, you know? if you find a libertarian, a uh, Democrat, so. Republican meeting, they are very lost and in, in dire need of help. <laughs> Um, they're probably, yeah, like they're probably uh, starving for good drinking buddies. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I I went to uh, I saw uh, Roger Stone actually, and it was a different crowd of people than I usually yeah, like hang around. It I was bet. a bunch of Trumpers, yeah, and Republicans, and you know, there's some things I agree with. Of course, is like you know, uh, like you know, my gun shall not be infringed. You know, like cool, like you know, sometimes capitalism. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. The, the Trump is less and less. Except, yeah, except when it comes to China. Oh, God. Sorry. And I'm like, I'm Chinese. Okay, anyway. So, but um, it, it was fun. It was fun nonetheless. There's some overlap, but I just want to keep pushing people towards just principled liberty. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it will happen, uh, especially as the state and those in the state or have influence over the state keep showing their cards. Like this whole thing with censorship on uh, the gram of having false information flags. Like I posted some story the other day and I was just making some commentary and it was a story on Instagram. So, you know, you can like add text and stuff. And uh, when I looked at it again, um, I, I had shared a, a, a book called um, The Great Reset by uh, Klaus Schwab. Uh, I might be butchering the name. I could look it up, but um, anyway, it came out recently, and it's all about you know Great Reset and uh, how to like seize this opportunity with COVID, and that's the narrative to radically make capitalism better and more fair, and it's like just a socialist scheme uh, or communist scheme. Um, anyway, so it just was flagged as like for information about COVID nineteen, like see here, and I'm like, you can't even see my commentary. I'm like, I don't like take that off. Like, I could even like close it, you know. Like, it was just permanently <laughs> overlaid. It said for information about COVID nineteen, click on. Oh yeah, that's so. Uh, 
was so annoying. So anyway, they're showing their cards. And yeah. I think it's alienating people and getting people to qu some people to question, be like, what the hell is going on? Why are they so um, in my face? Like they've never been before, especially those who've been on the platform, like been on Facebook, been on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube for years, maybe even at least more than a decade, like, right? Some people more than a decade, yeah. they know. And they're like, what the heck? It was never like this. It was never political like this. It was just, I want to make some money. Are you harming my bottom line? No? Okay, great. You could stay on. Here's some controls of how you can block other users who are giving you trouble. Great. But there wasn't like this weird um, coup happening uh, to specifically tar target certain kinds of people in connection with, I mean, uh, in partnership with the state, you yeah. know, and uh, specifically for some reason, I guess, for the de uh, the the socialists and the commies, the Democrats. Yeah, it, I've started to see it leak so. more into like completely ordinary people's social media. <laughs> they'll, they'll post something very innocent. They're like, why is this fucking notification on my thing? I'm just trying to share some, yeah. some of my 60 <laughs> followers on my private account. What the fuck? Um, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they kind of, they've, right. they've definitely done a, a clumsy job of moving in all these... Um, increasingly Orwellian restrictions and notifications and basically culture at this point where uh, it, it's just, you know, common knowledge that, oh, this might get deleted. Even, we even see, like, lefties are like, why is my post being fucking blocked? So, yeah, I, I think yeah. more and more people are going to start to... I've seen that too. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're like, you know, they, they didn't even pay attention to this shit. They just went about their happy life posting, you know, uh, like beach pictures and, <laughs> and all that shit. Whatever, whatever normal people do that aren't foaming at the mouth for this stuff, like us, can't relate. Cat videos. Yeah, <laughs> cat videos are a, a simpler time. Uh, the only cat video. I do love cat uh, videos still. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only cat videos I see uh, is is Buckle sharing like possum videos at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> and and Mel, like <laughs> the the Liberty Ladies. Doom break. Yeah. Yeah. yeah You're you, welcome. Supply us with uh, <laughs> reading lists and cats. So that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and I will add. So, like, in addition to seeing that uh, there will be more libertarians, I think. I think there will, you know, each day. I think more and more people are either coming across it or questioning what's going on. Um, but I think on the same token, at the same time, there will also, of course, be people who will be brainwashed and will be successfully indoctrinated. Uh, to follow this sort of NWO rhetoric, uh, this one world government, or just whether or not it's one world government, just that your government can be this authoritarian and that it's fine, <laughs> you know, and that you should just stay in line, keep your head down, don't disobey, keep your mask on, cover your face, you know, and pay your taxes, fund all these mofos. And <laughs> You know, and I think there will be that uh, as well, of course, continuing as there always have been throughout history. So it will, I think it will just continue to um, get more and more extreme. And I think it's going to get to a point where you can't really be neutral anymore. Like you're going to have to either go along with the Nazis and watch the Jews get pushed in the boxcar and continue to work at your job and fund these Nazis to put the juice in the boxcar, or you can actually like fight and do something about it. Um, so, well, yeah, you know, I mean, whatever form that it, is. It, it, people are being more and more forced to, you know, participate in, in systems they might not necessarily agree with. And so you're seeing that friction that you wouldn't see otherwise. It's you, people, these people would have gone about their lives without being bothered, but all of a sudden, um, you know, they're happy that lives are being interrupted by this ominous yeah. entity that hasn't necessarily done anything for them their whole life, apart from build the roads <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, 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 and then pay the cops who give them uh, tickets and you know, uh, business violations. And all of a sudden, you know, their uh, way of earning a living is being shut down. So, yeah, know, that's true. Like, more, more and more people are being... Right. Uh, being woken up to inconvenience. It. Yeah, they not not just inconvenience, but their lives being fucking ruined. I mean, they're like accidentally radicalizing a whole ton of people. They they might be gripping yes, whole agree. swaths mm -hmm. of power, but at the same time, yeah, exactly. they're, they're radicalizing yeah. people who wouldn't have ever thought about this stuff. 
They they were like yeah, happy tax cattle grazing, and all of a sudden, that's true. Obama put, yeah. put them in a mud pit and was like, "Yeah, keep on eating, fuckface." <laughs> yeah, because like nine eleven two thousand one, right? I mean, people kept paying taxes happily, and children in the Middle East being bombed, like um, there being uh, embargoes and people starving, not having being able to trade. You know, like that still went on, and that's two thousand one. <laughs> Yeah, 20 I mean, years. And that was a, some huge revolution because it wasn't close to your home. And, you know, it, it just kind of is what it is. Like most humans, what's the breaking point, right? What when, What is their line of when they're going to like take up arms? It's usually when they have nothing left to lose. Yeah. But if they have a lot of things to lose, they, you know, a lot of people calculate and say, well, uh, I mean, that God, that sucks about you know, kids in the Middle East, they may even be against it, but, you know, they're not necessarily going to, like, risk dying for for that, you know, but yeah. they would probably, like, protest against it, uh, like we are doing now, make memes, but <laughs> not necessarily, like, you know, show up with arms somewhere at Congress or something like that, and, like, demand it to stop. Like, you know, uh, that, so... That, that, um, that's how me and yeah. Buckle spent uh, one of our last weeks... <laughs> <laughs> it was a Saturday. Uh, yeah, yeah. So was, we, we were. <laughs> yeah, we, we, was, we spent our Saturday at the Capitol with our rifles. It was a good time. Met <laughs> met Wendy Rogers or whatever the fuck her name was, uh, our senator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with rifles um, in hand, <laughs> but um. Thumbs up, Wendy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by the E Militia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> spicy meeting. Um. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and I, oh, I didn't mention, but there will be another group, of course, the people who are going to, like, who we're against, which is those trying to control and enslave us. <laughs> so I think, you know, things are going to be very interesting. Um, we probably will see more violence to come. And I think the way to try to mitigate that is to try to just focus staying positive, building your relationships and connections. Um, whether you have existing relationships, those people that you love or you care about, you know, your friends, your family, staying in touch with them, trying to get to know them better, uh, enjoying your life. Like, you know, like I said, my, my core focus is philosophy, uh, focus on the acquisition and knowledge, knowledge about yourself, about the world, uh, you know, like I said, get closer to your family and build new ones, build new connections, especially locally to you, because I think that will be really important when it comes to the worst case scenario, which we don't really want, which is, you know, BR's name. <laughs> I don't know. Unless maybe there's some like ex Marine. He's like, yeah, this, you know, I, I'm used to this life. Like, I can go back in, you know, like most people. Oh, that, that, that's, are a, millennials, that's a, that's a friend like, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to, like, you know, camo out in the woods for 10 days and not shower. Like, I'm not about that right now. <laughs> Like, if I don't have to. And uh, <laughs> I think, though, it's possible. And so I think the best mitigation against that is to keep building your connections, um, learn about the technologies to stay anonymous and private on the internet, um, the looking into cryptocurrencies, uh, sound money like gold and silver, I think is really important. Uh, prepping, food storage, water. I think all those things are just really important right now and this focus on a decentralized uh, revolution. Not yeah. this, hey, let's all move to New Hampshire. I mean, that didn't, I mean, <laughs> I know it was like really good in theory, but yeah, we're, we're, it's we're, not we're, really working out. What do they call that? Anarcho Zionism? <laughs> uh, in New Hampshire? Or? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, when you come together? Uh, yeah, just the uh, just the term anarcho Zionism. Like, if we move here, we'll finally be free. Which, uh, you know, that that's oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of what I've done. So I can't really talk too much shit. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and I, I guess I mean your family had every every reason to to be freedom refugees as well. But um, there's there's yeah. going to be a point where you can't move away from it anymore. Where unfortunately, this is the best place to make some kind of stand and. Yeah. The peaceful revolution comes first, but fail on that. <laughs> we're, we're very fucking armed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um I mean there's nothing I'm not saying don't centralize like so please like if you got some buddies and you love each other and you got friends, whatever kids and you all want to 
you know, be in the same city or near each other, like, please go do that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, uh, <laughs> right. I'm just saying, like, it's just not, doesn't make sense to say, let's just have one state that's the libertarian state. I think it is just what it is. People are going to have their preferences, whether their family or whatever ties them to where they currently are. Maybe it's their homeland, you know, they just have sentimental value or they just love that place. Uh, most people are going to want to stay where they want to stay and they just want freedom there. So the question is, how do we build the technologies to uh, enable us to resist in a decentralized manner without requiring us all to be physically in the same room. And um, so, yeah, that's why I was saying those were like ghost guns. <laughs> so oh, that's absolutely. We, we, love uh, our, <laughs> we love our 3D printing friends. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. So I, I think the future is bright in, in many yeah. ways, but also very dark. And, and it will be dark for some people. Um, you know, if not already, in terms of like they died, and that's sad. <laughs> like they're, uh, you know, like it. I laugh, but it's sad, and I, I think, uh, yeah. So it, yeah, I, yeah. I'm just happy to be part of it, though. I'm, I'm glad I'm not, you know, 19 or 1800s, like lighting some candle. I don't know when the first electricity. Okay, I, so I just don't quote me on the date, but. Whatever, before <laughs> electricity, you had to like light candles or you had to walk like 20 miles to get water, 12 miles to get water, whatever, like my mom did. You know, it's, um, <laughs> I'm just like happy to see and be part of this progress right now. And to have this chance to understand what it takes to get this much progress. Yeah, it's and it's, what we need to do to like get more. <laughs> yeah, it's an experimental time. So, I mean, we're, we're seeing all sorts of people trying to come up with alternative ways to do this thing, and more and more people are thinking about unplugging and dropping out <laughs> as peacefully as they can. So, yeah. it's I I'm exactly. also I'm also optimistic for the future, despite all this dark shit. I think it's uh it's going to be a time of <laughs> it, it. It's afforded a lot of people a a chance to question <laughs> what all this is about. And uh, to see if they could do something better. So, I think uh, as long as we keep our message, you know, out there, keep on spreading, uh, spreading our message of peace, autonomy, and liberty, I think we'll be great. <laughs> no, no, great. But we'll get there. We're getting there. Yeah. Hey, we're in this together. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it like that. <laughs> but it's true. Okay. Um. <laughs> Next, you're gonna have me say America's back, baby. <laughs> yeah. uh i don't you want to be land of the free home of the brave maybe that's my like you know <laughs> u.s public school indoctrination speaking hey i mean we're, we're all Probably. we're all coping with it <laughs> <In some way. laughs> oh you're from oh i'm sorry i mean your accent gives it away i guess but you know you're not <laughs> you ain't from here so right. I, I, I had a i had a different flavor of <laughs> Of indoctrination, like, it's, all, yeah. it's all it's it's all from the same pot, just different flags. <laughs> statism is statism. Oh, but, you uh, have a queen still. You have a monarchy still. Oh, I'm I'm over I'm over here. So I'm dealing with, <laughs> I'm dealing with the American bullshit. The queen is not my issue anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I see. Well, uh, welcome. <laughs> I was wrong. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm glad you're a, a voluntarist, so you won't. He won't UK by US, oh, although God. it's already kind of UK. <laughs> I was gonna so. say we're, we're just ten years ahead of you. Uh, I know. I'm like, eh. I'm, eh. I'm the. <laughs> it's pretty close. I'm the canary in the mine, and not much else. But hey ho. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that's what we do around here. Um, is there anything you wanna, <laughs> anything you wanna plug, or any, uh, any anywhere people should check you out, or any message you have before we uh, get on here? Um. Uh... I'll say I really enjoyed this conversation. You guys are really cute. I noticed the fourth guy kind of like left. I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. his, his connection. Is cool. Yeah, that happens. He's out in the sticks. Oh, yeah. oh he's out in the sticks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. So this was really fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for inviting me on. Um. For my stuff, if you want to see what I'm up to, you can go to, um, link, t r dot e e slash the philosopher and that's the philosopher no spaces and philosopher with the o <laughs> so you can see my projects there 
uh, like music. There's a song called Tom Wood's House and the Fed and I Did Not Content. We actually released those songs in 2021. So like three songs already this year. So that's that's a record. That's that's cool. Um, and then some videos and we're going to try to do some more skits. So yeah, so just check out like my YouTube and that link I mentioned and uh, hope to see you around and um, stay free. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.